So in today's web dev tip, we're going to take a look at getters and setters in TypeScript classes. And if you've seen getters and setters in ES6 classes, then this will be really familiar to you. So imagine we've got our user class and there's a couple of member properties on here. Uh, so we've got the has access token and has valid session properties. And what we want to do is uh, return a new value to say whether the user is logged in or not, if both of these values are true. So we could just create a function to do this, but another way to approach it is to use a getter. So to define a getter on a TypeScript class, we just simply use the keyword of get, and then we name the new property that we want to use as the getter. So I'm going to use something like is logged in. And then it kind of looks a bit like a function here. So we open up some parentheses and then some curly braces. Then we just need to return a value from this getter and this is what will be used for the property that is created on the class and can be used elsewhere in your code. So for example, in this case, we could say if uh, the uh, object that's created has the access token value property set as true, and then we do the same thing for has a valid session as well, then we'll return true. If not, we'll return false. So the way we can use a getter once we've created an object like down here, is we can just actually access it in the same way that we'd access any other property that's available on the object. So here we've got is logged in. And if we run that code, what we should find is that that just returns false. Because when the object is created, uh, both these two properties here are set as false. So this just creates a property for you on your class that isn't a function, it's a natural property as you saw down here before, and it gives you access to anything that's private on the class. So for here, we can't directly access these private member properties, but we can do that and control the way that the private variables are accessed using this particular getter. So the opposite to this is to have a setter. So we might want to set the value of is logged in, but we don't actually have a concrete Boolean value uh, assigned to the is logged in property because it just obviously accesses these two uh, additional properties here. So what we might do is something like this, we might use the keyword set to create a setter and then say is logged in and then we'll provide it with a, a Boolean value here. So we'll just say is logged in. Uh, is whoops say uh, boolean and with this argument that's passed into the setter we can then do something to our class so we could say well if we're setting that the user is logged in then they must have an access token and a valid session so this is a bit of a contrived example but hopefully it illustrates how you might use a getter and a setter so in this instance if the uh, user is logged in uh, then we definitely know that they've got an access token for example and also a session id so with that in mind, if we now assign a true value to the is logged in property, uh, this code will trigger and it will update the uh, two private variables up here, which in turn will return true when we try and access the is logged in property. So if we go back down to our code where we're using our object, if we say the user dot is logged in, and remember it's a property, it's not a function, so we don't need to call a function with the parentheses here. We just assign it a new value, so we'll say it's true. And then when we run our code here again, we now find that the output on our console is also true. So remember, while we're actually using this is logged in property, there isn't actually a concrete Boolean value. There isn't a true or false value that's being stored anywhere. It's actually just accessing these other properties on the class and either returning their values or actually updating them. So hopefully that's given you an idea of how and when you might use some getters and setters in TypeScript. That's it for this tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.